If you're someone who works on large code bases written in JavaScript, I'm sure you've come across your fair share of issues in maintaining them. So migrating to TypeScript can help you manage your code base much better. The migration process is not that challenging, but it might be a little tedious, especially depending on the size of your code base. The good news is that TypeScript is built in a way that allows you to gradually migrate your projects. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the steps involved in migrating a production-like Node.js application to TypeScript. I'll also include a few tips that you can use to help with a gradual migration. Alright, let's begin. Now what I have here is a typical API backend. So we've got our source folder, we've got some controllers, some services, a server.js and an index.js. Also, we've got some tests. We've only written a test for the services, but I'll get to that. So the goal is to actually convert this entire service. It's rather small, but it is mimicking a production-like API. So let's open up the index.js file. Now this is basically spinning up a server from server.js. So server.js is spinning up your API using the core.js framework. I'm plugging in two different middlewares. One is my core body and another one for a products controller. Now my products controller is essentially a route for a products endpoint. So if I open up the products controller, it's basically extending from a core router, which is another external dependency. Products controller is setting up a route or rather an endpoint for forward slash products and it's a get endpoint. So what happens in this forward slash products endpoint is we return the response that's given to us by this product service. Now product service is basically a mock service that is trying to mimic what an actual real world repository would be returning. So this would be your database call that's returning all the products, but obviously we're gonna mock that stuff in here. So we have three different products returned in an array and also we have another dependency which is UUID to generate a UUID for each response. Now that's basically our application. So let's try to migrate this entire application to TypeScript. Now the first thing you want to be doing is to set up a tsconfig.json file. So we'll do that by using npx. npx comes bundled with newer versions of npm. It basically lets you run commands from an npm package without actually having to install the package. So we've now set up our tsconfig file. Let's open it up and let's have a look. So it has this compiler options and it's set a lot of commented options, but it's also enabled some of them. Now let's actually do a few things. The first thing is your out directory. We need to set an out directory. We'll set it as dist. We also need to set the root directory, which is at its current level. So that looks good. Can go further down. Let's also change module resolution and set it to Node.js. And for the time being, let's set this ES module interrupt to false for now. We'll revisit this later because this is something that can help you with a gradual migration. Now, this looks good so far. So I think we are set up with the tsconfig at least to get things started. Now the next step for us is to rename the JS files to TS. So let's actually do that. We'll revisit the test a little later, but for now, let's focus on the application files. So starting off with index.js. So index.js looks fine, but if you go over to server.ts, we are seeing quite a few red squigglies. And the same goes for products.ts under the controller. 
and the spec file which we'll revisit later on the services and so on so basically changing these to ts files has introduced some errors or recommendations now let's try to fix them one by one the first step is to actually start using ES6 module imports. Currently, you can see we are using the common JS style imports. So let's go ahead and change all the modules to start using ES6. Alright, so now we've converted all the application files to start using ES6 module imports. And index.js looks good. We are not seeing any errors here. Let's move on to server.ts. Now server.ts is reporting a few issues. Let's start off with this. So it's saying cannot find module core or its corresponding type declarations. Now, the reason is because TypeScript is expecting its type definitions for these libraries, which we obviously haven't provided. So let's fix this by installing their types. So we can do npm install at types, we can do core. Ideally, we want to be doing this for our dev dependencies only. So let's also do core router, set this as a dev dependency in this case, which I forgot in the first place. All right, so that seems to have taken those errors away. Now, next up, it's still complaining about a few things. It's basically saying that the module is declared using export equals and can only be used with a default import when using the ES module interop flag. So what this means is we're trying to use a common JS module within our ES6 module. Now this can work, but we need to explicitly define this in the TS config. So over here, remember we turned off ES module interop well, we need to turn that back on. That basically allows you to use CommonJS and ES6 modules together. And this is important because your code base might already be using CommonJS and you might not want to change all your modules into ES6 modules. So make sure that ES module interrupt is turned on so you don't have to migrate all of your modules into ES modules, you can simply decide to migrate them gradually. So in this case, you might also have external dependencies that you have no control over. So you definitely will need to use this ES module interrupt whenever you're doing a migration, whether it's gradual or whether it's in one go. All right, so let's move back and that error seems to have gone. Okay, so we got our core router as well. So it's complaining that you don't have a type definition for the external dependency UUID. Now, UUID already has its own type definitions, which we can easily install. But let's assume that this is an external dependency that doesn't come with any types. So what can you do in this case? Well, you can declare your own type definitions for libraries. So let's actually do that. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it at types. Now in here, I'm going to say, just going to give it a generic name and I'm going to call it module.d.ts. That's how you define type definitions. And let's declare a module. Let's call it UUID. Now this alone should remove that error. But the problem is that we haven't really given any type definitions for its use cases, right? So we've got this v4. We don't know what this v4 is. We are reassigning it as UUID v4 and we are calling it assuming it's a function. But it could well be something else. So we want to make sure that we give the proper types 
for this external dependency. So let's actually do that. So let's say that it's a function. It's called v4. It accepts no arguments and it returns a string. So there you go. We've now given it a type definition. So it says v4 is a function. Now we can easily call it as a function. And for example, if we change this into a string, for example, well, v4 is going to be a string and we can't actually call a string as a function. So an error pops up. This is exactly the kind of thing that you are benefiting from by introducing TypeScript into your projects. So let's go back in here, change it to a function and that looks good. All right. So there are still a few things that we are seeing complaints about. So you can see that parameter port implicitly has any type. So again, there are a couple of things you can do to actually fix this. The first and most obvious thing is to actually assign a type for it. We know that this port is going to be a number. It's called from index.ts. So we can assign it the type number. And that's great. But let's say that you're seeing these errors pop up throughout your entire code base. And you probably don't want to go ahead and change every single file, right? The whole idea is to do a gradual migration. So there are things that you don't want to touch at all. What can you do about it? Well, in that case, we can remove this again. We have a couple of options. The first one is to use at tsignore. So you can go ahead and add this comment to all these places that you are explicitly going to ignore for the time being. This is also good in a way because it allows you to revisit and figure out what you want to do with these ignored comments. Another option is to actually set this in your tsconfig.json. So in your tsconfig.json, there is something called no implicit any. Now, when you set strict to true, it's going to enable strict on all these rules over here. So let's keep strict as is, but go ahead and change this to false. So that should take the error away as well. Now, these are your options. You can either define the type explicitly. If you don't want to do that, you can add your ignore comments or you can just set it globally in your tsconfig.json. Now let's move on to the products.ts. Now you can see this context object has an any type. We want to be more explicit. We know exactly what this context object is. So let's assign it the context which comes from core. So there you go. So that imports core and it destructures the context object and we assign that as the type of this parameter. Now it's actually time to transpile this code into JavaScript. So let's see how we can do that. The first step is to actually install TypeScript. So let's install TypeScript as a dev dependency. Once that's done, let's open up our package.json. Now we need to do a couple of things here. Let's set up a new script. Let's call it build. And it's going to do TSC. TSC is basically your TypeScript executable. Let's define the project that we're going to be using. And that is your tsconfig.json. So that is basically your TypeScript build script. Now let's run it. And you're seeing a few errors, two errors, in fact. And this is because we didn't actually migrate or convert our test files. So what if you don't want to include your test files in your build? Well, we can go to tsconfig. And say include only the source folder. Let's go back in here, build it again, and there you go. So we've excluded any of our test files. 
Now, obviously we are gonna migrate it, but I just wanted to show you that you are in control of the things that need to be included when it comes to transpiling your TypeScript code. And you should set this up to the way you want it to be. All right, so now let's cover the final piece. What do we do about tests? Now, the first thing is open up the tests. You can see a few things that we need to do. Obviously, we need to change the way we import modules. So let's quickly do that. Now you can see that I'm using Chai and Mocha to set up my tests. So first error is basically saying I don't have a type definition for Chai. So let's actually install types for both Chai and Mocha. And that just basically gets rid of all the errors. Now, the next step is how do we actually run this test? Because we know that this test is relying on this product service, which is a TS file. But a TS file needs to be transpiled before this test can be run. So one thing we can do is use a just-in-time transpiler. Now, there is a package called TS node. that lets you do this just in time transpilation. So TS node is great for local development use and setting up your tests. And let's actually include TS node in our test script. So we are saying mocha tests run this specific wildcard, but we need to include TS node and register. This should basically transpile any of your TypeScript code just in time and execute the test. So if you go in and do npm run test. All right, so it's complaining that, oh yes. So we need to rename this to TS because now it's converted to TypeScript and it's all TypeScript code. So there you go. Our single test is passing successfully. So basically that's it for this video guys. I wanted to cover some of the main and important things that you can consider and use when it comes to migrating a production-like application. So a production-like application usually has a bunch of tests, it has a bunch of external dependencies that might have types or might not. So we've covered that scenario. We've also covered a scenario where you might not want to migrate your entire code base where in that case, you can always use the module interop to enable common JS and ES modules. There's also one last thing which I forgot to include, and that can be very useful as well. Now, if you want to actually retain some of your code as JavaScript files, well, you can leave them as JavaScript files, but you can go into your TS config and say, love JS. So this basically allows your already existing JavaScript code to be included in the transpilation. Obviously, nothing much is going to happen there, but that allows you to change or migrate a percentage of your code into TypeScript and leave the rest of them in JavaScript. So I hope all of these tips are helpful to you. And if you found them helpful, please like this video and drop some comments down below if you have any questions. If you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you in the next one.